In this example, you're asked to solve the equation square root of 3 times sine of t plus cosine of t equals 1, where t is between 0 and 2 pi radians. Uh, so to start out this one, you would notice that the equation involves two different trig functions. And we'd like to rewrite it in terms of a single trig function. Now the catch is our, our relationship between sine and cosine, what we usually use to convert from one of those functions to the other, is some form of the identity sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1, um, which allows us to turn, say, sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. OK, but the, the squared portion of that is critical. So if it's just sine to the first, I can't turn that into a, a function of cosine the way this thing is written. That's why the strategy, if, if you have an equation involving just sine and cosine to the first power, is to isolate either sine of t or cosine of t and square both sides. So that's, that's generally our strategy. Um, it doesn't matter which of those functions that you isolate. I'll say isolate one function uh, and square both sides. The catch to that, when you square both sides of an equation, you have to check for what's called extraneous solutions. Uh, I'll just put must check all of the, we'll call them potential solutions that we come up with, we have to check them in the original equation at the end of this problem. Uh, the reason, yeah, and let me give you a quick reason why you get these extraneous solutions, uh, or more of an illustration, I guess. If you take the equation um, x equals 2, the solution set for that equation is just the number 2. However, if you square both sides, and you have x squared equals 4, now the solution set actually includes two values, 2 and negative 2. x could be 2 or x could be negative 2, and it would satisfy this equation, the second equation. Um, so when you square both sides of an equation, you get these extra, oops, sorry, these extra solutions that sneak in, in this case, the negative 2. Um, that don't actually satisfy the original equation. If you try substituting negative 2 for x in the equation x equals 2, it's not going to work. Okay, so negative 2 is an extraneous solution. All right, so this is going to come into play in the last step. So I just want, I wanted to point that out now. As soon as you know that your strategy is to square both sides, you should remind yourself, okay, I'm going to have to check my potential solutions in the end. Um, but what we need to do right now is the, the squaring of both sides. Okay, so let me rewrite, oops, rewrite the original equation here. Um, and if I'm looking at this equation, I don't really care for that square root of 3 either. I mean, it makes things look a bit messy. So I'm going to move the cosine over. And again, it doesn't matter which function. So if you solve this isolating cosine, you, you, you would get the same solutions. Um, but so I'm going to isolate square root of 3 sine t. So that, okay, now I can square both sides. When I square the left side, I would square each part. So the square root of 3 squared is just 3, and then sine squared. So the nice thing there is um, I've gotten rid of that ugly square root of 3 for now anyway. Um, on the right side, now remember that 1 minus cosine t squared, so that's 1, let's see if I can fit this, 1 minus cosine t times 1 minus cosine t. Uh, and so we should FOIL that, multiply it out. First, 1 times 1 gives me 1. Outside, 1 times negative cosine, so that's negative cosine t. And then inside gives me negative cosine t. So if I put those together, that would be negative 2 cosine t. And then last, so negative cosine t times negative cosine t gives me positive cosine squared. Okay, 
Now we've still got a, an equation involving two different trigonometric functions, but now the lone wolf over here is sine squared, which that can be turned into a function of cosine using this identity up here. Uh, so now we're going to turn that one, sorry, that sine squared into one minus cosine squared using that Pythagorean identity. So let me see. Okay. So now we have, oops, well, three times one, three times sine squared, which is, we're replacing that with one minus cosine squared equals one minus two cosine t plus cosine squared. Okay, and now we should distribute the three, and then I'm going to move everything over to the uh, right, right hand side here, just because that way my squared term is positive. Let me go ahead and re rearrange the left, or uh, the right hand side. Okay, so cosine. I'm going to put the squared term in front, cosine to the first here, and that's positive one, and then subtract three from both sides and add three cosine squared to both sides. So that now we have four cosine squared minus two and then one minus three so that's minus two. Now notice that everything here is divisible by two so if we can divide out just a constant like that that's always a good idea it makes our numbers a bit smaller and easier to work with. So now divide each term by two so this is two cosine squared negative one cosine t minus one and that can be factored since there's so much else going on in this problem, I'm going to move through the factoring fairly quickly. We've had to factor several times now. The only way to, to um, factor 2 times this quantity squared is 2 times 1. Uh, the only way to factor negative 1 would be a negative, with integers I should say, it would be negative 1 times 1. I want the outside inside part to give me a negative cosine t. So I want to put the negative 1 here so that 2 times the outside part will give me negative 2, inside part gives me positive 1, and that'll add up to this negative 1 cosine t. Okay, set each factor equal to 0. Isolate the cosine t in each of those. So if I move the 1 over, it'll be negative 1 and then divide by 2 here. Here I would add 1 to both sides, so this is a positive 1. Okay, and once you get the trig function by itself, now you need to go to the unit. So we have two possibilities here. We have cosine t equals negative 1 half, and oops, I'm going to color code this, cosine t equals 1. All right, so cosine is equal to 1 here. We're supposed to be in radians, so when t equals 0 radians. Cosine of t has a value of negative 1 half. Remember that that's the x-coordinate on the unit circle. And so that occurs twice when t is 2 pi over 3 radians or 4 pi over 3 radians in quadrant 3 there. Okay, and so we would be done if we hadn't solved this thing by squaring both sides. So the squaring both sides, we have to go back and say, okay, yeah, but one of these solutions might have snuck in just when I chose to square both sides. So we have our potential solutions. All that's left is to check them. And the way you check whether it's an extraneous solution, I'm going to abbreviate solutions here, um, is to plug it into the original. All right, so I've written the original equation out here. So our potential solutions were, let's see, the first one was zero. So you'd plug zero into the original equation. Square root of three times sine of zero plus cosine of zero. And we want to verify whether that equals one. Well, sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. You can always, you can go grab your unit circle if you want to verify that. But so that does equal one. So t equals zero is a verified solution here. 
Uh, now let's check 2 pi over 3. So plug it into the original equation, square root of 3 times sine of 2 pi over 3 plus cosine of 2 pi over 3. Okay. So that's equal to the square root of 3. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is positive square root of 3 over 2. Cosine, remember this is in quadrant 2. Flip over to your unit circle if you want to. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, now multiply this straight across. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives me 3 over 1 times 2 gives me 2. Remember, there isn't a denominator. The denominator is 1. Minus 1 over 2. So this gives me 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Okay, so 2 pi over 3 is a solution. All right, last but not least, 4 pi over 3. Okay, so square root of 3 times sine, and you get the idea with this part probably. Okay, plug in values. So four, sine of 4 pi over 3. Now that's down in quadrant 3. The y coordinate, so the value of sine is negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is also negative. It's negative 1 half. If you multiply straight across over here, you still have square root of 3 times square root of 3, so it's still going to be 3 over 1 times 2. But this time it's a positive times a negative, so now it's negative minus one half. So this is equal to negative four over two, which is negative two, not one, like we were supposed to get. So this is an extraneous solution. And your solution set to this equation, this very long solution here, we finally end up with zero and two pi over three as our solutions.